Hey guys, my name is Julius Gilger. Excited to have you guys on today. We have a special guest, Max Zimmerman, joining us. She joined Family First Life about 10 days ago um, and has been in the field uh, a few days. Uh, and she has already submitted over 11,000 in business in just 10 days with Family First Life. Excited to have you on, Max. How are you doing out there? I'm doing great, Julius. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for joining us and being in business with us. So let's start off by just telling folks um, a little bit about your background, what you were doing before here, and then we'll jump into the, the nuts and bolts of this. Yeah. So, I mean, for 20 years, I was in restaurant and business. And about four years ago, I joined a company that did, um, you know, life insurance and um, joined in with them, but it was a lot of friends and family. And so it was a tough road and we, we went that path and then, um, you know, left that practice company and came here and using everything I've learned and, and open to learning more from, from you guys, because obviously you're super successful and just applying all of that and getting out in the field. So a um, little, little rundown of kind of how I got here. <laughs> all right. All right. So you had some previous experience with another company and, and it's, um, you know, full transparency, guys, Max and I have worked together in the past at another company, right? Um, so tell tell everybody kind of what you saw here that was in, in contrast, because some people, this is all they know. They joined Family First Life through some means, whether they, they know someone, they saw us on social media, and they've never lived in an alternative world in the insurance business. So what does that look like? What does that feel like? So people can realize like, this is, this is different than what some of these other opportunities are out there. What, so what did that look like for you? Yeah, the biggest thing that I've experienced in the last 10 days is like at, at the practice company, if I had six appointments in a week, I was doing really good, right? Um, and those appointments were, you know, hour, hour and a half long. And then we'd do a follow-up with the client later for an hour, hour and a half. So it was a lot of time commitment to a single appointment with a single client. And um, it, it there wasn't a lot because we were doing friends and family, there wasn't a lot of resources always at our fingertips, right? It's not like we could just, you know, jump online and, and suddenly have an extra 150 people that we could reach out and contact. Um, all that happened through recruiting. So we would recruit somebody and then work with their friends and family. But, you know, it was a little bit limited on who they knew or if they knew anybody, right? And so really just working through that, it really limited the resources that we had to work with. And um, I just love having unlimited resources. <laughs> it's been amazing. Um, it's been awesome to really just be able to, you know, jump on at 730 in the morning and be able to build out my schedule, build out my business for the week. That's not something I had access to before. So that's been uh, really rewarding. <laughs> That's awesome. So when you're saying resources, let's call it what it is. It's leads, right? People you can actually yeah. help, right? So you, you know, we had no leads at the, at the other company unless we recruited someone and then tried to sell to their friends and families. Here, we can literally wake up, make a purchase, go on the CRM, go on any website and buy some leads, right? Um, so absolutely. No, that's awesome. All right. So, so it's completely different business, right? Obviously you've sat a bunch of people. Let's actually talk about the mechanics. Cause I think, I think it's important, like, you know, while you had a difference in where you came from, from here, but you already had some experience in the business, this is still a new experience for you in terms of probably activity, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Am I right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> okay. So, so it, share with everybody, was there any pieces of this first 10 days? What was uncomfortable? What was different? What, what did you learn? Um, and then let's kind of talk about what your last 10 days actually look like. Yeah. So I think it was uncomfortable for me to sit still for dial days. Um, I, I texted Julius and was like, still calling, just keep calling, just keep calling. And I got through a ton of numbers and scheduled a ton of appointments, but that was really uncomfortable for me. Like I'm used to scheduling one or two appointments and being like, all right, let's go do something. Right. So just sitting and dialing was a little uncomfortable for me, but really just pushing through that. And I think the other thing that was super uncomfortable for me was scheduling as many appointments as I did in a single day. So like I said, with the practice company, if you had six appointments in a week, you were doing awesome, right? 
But here, I mean, I scheduled nine appointments in one day. So <laughs> that was pretty uncomfortable to try and build out my schedule and, and know how to how to meet with those clients and be able to, to sit down with them. So I think those were the two biggest things that I really had to overcome. And ultimately, it just came down to, you know, working, working on my mindset, like just, okay, other people are doing this, and they're successful, I can do this too, and just kept trudging. I don't know how many times I've texted people in the last week, just keep calling, just keep calling, uh, <laughs> little Finding Nemo reference there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's you just keep calling and and people answer. I mean, it's just amazing. And, and the work that I've been able to do is, is just really awesome. That's amazing. So everyone has a different thing or, or um, activity that makes them a little uncomfortable. Mine was buying leads when I started, right? Yours is sitting still. And, and quite honestly, I think mine was also sitting still for dial day because <laughs> I wasn't used to it. And, and quite honestly, like, I don't know anyone that's like so excited, like, okay, I'm going to dial today, right? Like, let's just call it what it is. A spade is a spade. No one's ever really excited, but we know it's the means to an end, right? We know that yeah. the work is actually done on dial day. And then how much easier is it in the field? Like once you set these appointments, what is field day like now that you've, you've had a few days in the field? Yeah. So, I mean, based on my family's schedule and just kind of childcare needs and everything else, I'm really dialing on Mondays and running on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Um, I tried to fill in a couple of Zooms here and there, but you know, that's something I obviously need to get better at. Um, but really for the last two weeks, I've just been running Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And so for me, I'm dialing on Tuesdays. I start at 7.30 in the morning. Um, so, I'm sorry, I dial on Mondays. <laughs> I start at 7.30 in the morning and I'm dialing through all the numbers that I have one time straight through. Then I take a, a break, like an hour, hour and a half break. And then I jump back on and dial all the way through them again. Based on that, I've been able to really pack out my schedule for Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, maybe a little too full on some days. I pack the appointments a little too close together, but definitely it's a it's a good problem to have, right? Um, I, to have too many appointments in two days is an awesome problem to have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the name of the game here is appointments, guys. And so um, I think you guys are hearing that. So let's talk a little bit about Max. What does that actually mean, right? Let's let's get some detail behind that. So, your first week, how much did you? How many leads did you get? How much did you invest? So I got um, I got about a hundred leads somewhere in, in an area of there, hundred somewhere around there, and I spent about three hundred dollars. So definitely use some of the discounts that they pop up for work spots and everything else. Um, I was able to schedule. I think it was like 12 or 13 appointments. I sat six of them and I sold four of them. Okay. So you, so if you spent $300 with a discount, I'm assuming their second chance, either mortgage or internet leads. Yeah. So final expense, internet leads, like, like three month old, uh, the cheaper ones. Right. Okay. And okay. So you used a bunch of inexpensive leads to start because Mm -hmm. Let's face it. You're trying to get your skill set down, right? You set yeah. 12 appointments. You sat with six. You said you sold four? Four. Four. Okay. So, so there's your numbers, right? You, she sat 50%. She closed about, what's four out of six? 70%, 66%. 60 <laughs> close rate, whatever it is. Yeah. So you're, you closed at a high level and, and, and now would you be able to close that many if you had eight appointments or five appointments? Probably not, right? Because the numbers are still the numbers, guys. And that's the thing. Like one of the things I learned here early on is what I lack in skill, I make up an activity, right? Like I couldn't do that. We couldn't do that at our old company because there just wasn't enough activity. With, with leads, you can do that, right? But that's what it is, right? And, and you're finding that out real quick by having a lot of appointments. You're going to see a lot of people. You're going to learn a lot of stuff. So, all right. Yeah. So the next week, how much did you invest? How many did you set? What did you buy? Let's let's go through it again. Yeah, so I um oh gosh, uh night I, I ended up putting like nine hundred dollars in on the second week. So that was for for phone uh dial day on Monday. Uh I did I did about nine hundred dollars in leads. Um in total for the two weeks, I had about 308 leads to work with, um, any, any of them that I hadn't resolved from the previous week. Um, Monday, 
dialed like the schedule I shared with you earlier, dialed all morning, all afternoon, put in a total of probably eight hours of dialing and scheduled 18 appointments for Monday and Tuesday. All right. So 18 appointments. How many did you sit with? Uh, sat with eight of them. And sold? And sold four. Four for another 5,400 or so? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in, in the two weeks, you've, you've sold 11,000 and you've spent 1,900. Yeah. Okay. I am assuming if you haven't already got all your deposits, but you probably have already got back in the ballpark of five, six, seven grand at least. Does that sound about right? Yep. Okay. Not bad return week one, right? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Now, how long would it have taken you to make that at the other company? Real, just be real. What does that look like? Month, maybe two, because the payouts weren't very quick. So, you know, you'd write the business and then two weeks later, you'd get a little, maybe a month later, you'd get a little more. So um, writing the business and then getting paid out would probably take about two months. That's amazing. And then how fast do these carriers pay? So you wrote a policy. How fast are you getting paid? Yeah. So I wrote a policy on Friday and got paid by Monday in time to buy more leads. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And so, so guys, if you haven't sold a policy yet and you're, uh, and you're watching this, now we're in the future and you're like, is this real? Max, is this real? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, cool. All right, so let's break down a few things. Let's, let's do a role play of a dial, okay? I, um, okay? Do you have your script in front of you or do you need that? No, I got it. You got, oh, I like the confidence. Okay, okay. Um, all right, so let's do this because, I mean, you've now made you know, hundreds of calls. You should have the basic repetition down of what it looks like and feels like, but I... I want to go through that with folks so they can hear what, what you're doing. I mean, you're only a few days in, two, three dial days in, right? Like it's just anyone can do it. So, um, all right. So you call me and then let's role play. Julius, this is Max over at the benefits office here in Washoe County. I'm just getting back to you about the state regulated life insurance request that you sent in a few weeks ago. Um, I just need to validate some information first. We have your date of birth here as 61073. Is that correct? Yep. Okay, great. And then is your home address still 123 Main Street? Yep. Oh, perfect. Is that a house or an apartment? Uh, it's a home. Okay, awesome. So I, like I said, I'm just the field underwriter that's been assigned to your case. Um, going through some specific details to kind of validate your information. I, we don't have it here. Are you single, married, widowed, or divorced? Single. Perfect. And then are you still working full time, retired or disabled? Um, I'm still working. Working full time. What kind of hours are you work in? They got you full time or part time? Uh, they got me full time. Full time. I'm usually like so eight are to you five, like that. Eight to five. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That, that allows you to have some free time for sure. Right. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, like I said, my name's Max. I'm just letting you know that we did get your request. I'm, again, just the senior field underwriter assigned to get this information out to you through a quick process. Um, all the services that we work with are non-medical, so there's no blood, urine, doctor's appointments, none of that. They just have me coming out to verify that you are who you say you are. Um, make sure you don't weigh a thousand pounds, you're not strapped down to a hospital bed or anything like that. That doesn't describe you, does it? No, definitely not. No, definitely not if you're working full time, right? That's right. <laughs> Perfect. Well, uh, they have me dispatched out into your area the next two days. I'm seeing about 15 other families, so I, I, I can probably fit you in. Let me see here. Um, you said you're working eight to five. Is that correct? Yeah. What time do you usually get home from work, like walking in the door? Um, 5.30. 5.30. Okay. Well, I don't have a 5.30. I do have a, a 6 o'clock or I can do a 6.45. Which one's better for you? Um, 6 should be fine. What, remind me again, what's this for? Yeah, this is for the life insurance request that you had sent in. Like I said, I'm just the field underwriter. It's just my job to get this information out to you and validate some that, it, that you are who you say you are. So we're looking at tomorrow at 6.45. You'll be home in the door. I can just swing by for a couple minutes, drop this stuff off to you. Yeah, that should be fine. 
Okay, great. And then can you grab a piece of paper and a pen real quick? I want to give you your confirmation number just to make sure that you can validate who I am when I show up. We'll, you'll have the secret code. Okay. You ready for it? Oh, I love secret codes. Go ahead. Okay. The code's going to be MAX837. Can you repeat that back to me? MAX837. Perfect. And can you write down my name, Max Zimmerman? Max Zimmerman. Awesome. And we're meeting tomorrow at 645. I'll be pulling up in my little black sedan and I will see you then. Um, can you guys, can you think of any reason why maybe you wouldn't be home during that time? Um, no. And there's no gate codes or large dogs or anything I need to jump through to get to you? No, nope, no. Nope. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Julius. I appreciate it. And I look forward to helping you tomorrow at 645. Awesome. Awesome. Great job. I mean, you are a natural on the phone for being on the phone only a few dial days here. That was very, very smooth. So great job. I can see why you're booking a lot of appointments. Um, so a few things you did really, really well there. Um, and, and if you guys didn't pick up on this, write this down because she, she did it masterfully. When I asked, what is this? She didn't over talk. She repeated what exactly I she was calling about. This is about the life insurance request you submitted a few days ago. Then you just went right into, it's just my job to drop off this information and get the information you requested. You didn't like try to oversell it. You just, here's what it is. I got to drop it off. And then you got right back to your scripting, which was beautifully done, right? That's exactly how you want to overcome any question or rebuttal or objection, right? Is that's exactly, um, that's exactly um, how you want to do it. Um, number two, um, when you cemented the appointment, you did a great job of cementing the appointment. You, um, you had me a write down information B you asked, is there any reason you wouldn't be there tomorrow at this time, which that if you're having trouble with your show rate, that's a great question to ask. Is there any reason you wouldn't be there at this time? Right? So if you had a bunch of appointments that didn't show up, make sure you're adding that into your script. Is there any reason why you wouldn't be there at this time? Okay. I, I'm repeating that a few times for you guys. So if you, if you've had that issue, add that in. Um, and then you were done, right? Um, do I have permission to just give you a little bit of coaching? Of course. Yes. And maybe, maybe you do this, maybe it was just because of the call, but one of the things I would just make sure you don't breeze over is making sure they write down the date and time of the appointment. So you said you said date and time, right? I have you for tomorrow at five or you know six, but you didn't have them write it down, right? The chances of of them being there increase when they actually write that down, not that you just say it, because now they wrote it down like, oh, I had something to do. I wrote, I remember I wrote it down. What? what? And then when they're at home, they walk in, they see it on the kitchen table. Oh, Max is coming over, right? So just yeah. little, little thing. It probably not going to make a huge difference, but it's just an, even that one time it makes a difference. It's enough. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So just make Thank sure you. they write down the date and time. So, but otherwise masterfully done. Now let's talk real quick about the in-home, right? What is your, and actually before we get there, it looks like there was a question. Erica asks, are you normally that friendly over the phone or is it because we're, we're doing this? <sighs> yes. I'm normally that friendly over the phone. <laughs> All right. I, I think we're, you know, in full transparency, I think most of us are not. We're normally very um, kind of short and sweet and direct and to the point and kind of like monotone. And But the fact that you can be you and you're flowing and your voice tone works and, it, and you could book appointments like that, hey, be natural, be you. And, and if it works, it works, right? Um, it's working so far. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't break what's working. So keep it, keep it up for me. If I did that, they'd hang up. So I have to be, <laughs> and most people have to be very low and slow in their approach, but it's, it's obviously working. So keep doing what you're doing. Um, all right. Let's talk about the in-home. So you, you know, you set the appointment, you, you obviously you've set a bunch of appointments, you ring the bell, they open the door. What does that look like? So I, when they open the door, I say, hi, I'm Max. I'm here for our, you know, 645 appointment, shoes on or off. And um, I'm walking in and then, um, you know, we're sitting down and I, I get to the point quickly. So uh, at the practice company, we did a lot of relationship building and, you know, you'd spend the first 10, 15 minutes just making small talk about their house and different things. Um, 
here, I love that I can just get to the point quickly. And so um, I'm pulling out the credibility sheet. I'm showing them my license and I, I'm, I'm literally starting. I, I give them the, I print off the template that they give us, the mailer template. And I say, here's all the information I was provided. Is this correct? Now, I already confirmed the appointment with that information. So I know that information is correct, but I just want them to have something tangible in their hand to look at while I kind of get settled in. And then once they've looked at that and said, yeah, that's correct, then I hand them my license uh, and I say, you know, my name is Max. Like I said, the reason I'm able to come out and meet with you today is because I'm licensed by the state. Um, all the programs that I we would talk about today are state regulated. And then I flip over the paper and I talk about the companies that we work with, you know, 20 plus uh, A plus rated companies. That is what I, that's what I have access to. I don't work for the companies. I work for you. And so my job today is just to find out what you could qualify for. Does all that make sense? Um, I, that's literally my intro. <laughs> Simple as that, right? Not, yeah. I mean, that's all it is. So they're not slamming the door in your face. They're, op they're letting you in. They're waiting for you, right? Like it's just very normal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. I, I showed up to a house. I was telling somebody the other day and a bunch of kids are running around and I was there to meet a gentleman and his wife was like, Hey honey, Max is here. And all the kids were like, Oh, Max is here. Like they already knew who I was. I was already part <laughs> of the family and we had never even shaken hands before. So it was really cool. Like to be welcomed in and to know that, you know, I'm there to help them. They were really excited to be able to sit down. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. So for those people that are watching that maybe they're going to start dialing this week, next week, or they're just getting rolling, what tips do you have for new agents that are just about to get out there and, you know, get their first lead order, do their first dial day, go out in their first appointments? What would you say to those people? Um, I mean, I think the big thing for me was just like perception versus reality. Um, I can convince myself of anything as my own perception, but the reality is, you know, if I have 300 numbers to call and one person is rude to me, that's my perception that, you know, this, like, what I'm trying to say is my thought process is if somebody hangs up on me, man, man, this doesn't work, or that was a bunch of crap, or this isn't easy. And um, no one said it was going to be easy, right? And so my perception can really go to a negative place. But the reality is that if I make five more phone calls, I could potentially set an appointment and go out and help a family just out of five phone calls, right? So it's really about just dialing all my numbers and making sure that I'm really um, not letting my perception drive my action. It's all about, you know, watching the videos on YouTube, hearing about success stories from other people and what they've done, knowing that that's the reality and that sometimes the thoughts going on in my head aren't reality. So it's just my perception. So really just pushing through that. I think that was the biggest challenge for me, new and approaching new things, you know, dial days, driving, all of that. Um, it was just like, you know what, this works if I work it. So it's just my job to get in there and take the action um, and not let my own perceptions or my own thoughts get in the way. Isn't it crazy how when you're starting something new and you're stretching your comfort zone, like I know a lot of people say step outside your comfort zone, but let's face it, we stretch our comfort zone um, to certain limits, right? And so when we stretch our comfort zone, it challenges us mentally thinking, are we doing the right thing? Can I do this? Right. And all these, um, these tricks or minds play against us where it's just fear creeping in for whatever reason, because we haven't done it and it's new and it's unknown and it's uncertain. But when you push through like you have, and you continue to dial and you didn't give up and you went on the appointments and you got no showed and you kept pushing and you went to the next one. And then you take a step back and you look and you sold 11 grand in 10 days, which would have taken you a month to do what the other company you did in a week. Doesn't that feel so rewarding? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's definitely without the experience. So being new, I don't have the experience of doing that yet. So I just keep pushing and kind of riding on the coattails of other people who have said that that's what you can do. But now that I have literally done it in 10 days, I'm looking at, okay, what can I do in the next 10 days? You know, what could I do if I, get, you know, now that I'm getting a little bit better with my skill and, and with my scripts and, and everything, it's like, okay, so now what's possible? And so it's really fun to be able to be, at first it was like, I just want to make sure that this thing works. Now it works. Now what's possible for the future. That's the exciting thing for me.
Yeah, that's so that's so true. Now, and think about so there are a few things, right? So you said a few things there that we can even extrapolate on. Today is the worst you're ever going to be, right? <laughs> Today is the worst you're ever going to be, and if in your worst you wrote 11k in 10 days, what is it going to look like a year from now, two years right? from now, three years from now, and and not only just personal production, but think about the amount of people you can inspire, teach, coach and share this story with, right? Like this is your story. I can't take it from you. You're, you're living it. We just plugged you in, you're doing it, right? And so you, you have what's went through your mind and that's what you, you know, that's how we help the people coming behind us. It's like, hey, I was there. I was scared to buy leads. I didn't know if the money's gonna come to me in 24 to 48 hours. You're starting me off at a commission of 100% and I, st- and I came from 80%, like, wait, what? <laughs> Like, and I, I was at 63%. <laughs> oh my God. Exactly. So you've got like, whatever your bonus is, you got I almost, way more. Yeah. Now. I pretty much doubled my contract. <laughs> that doesn't suck. Right. So it's, I get it. We've all been there. And so those are the stories that, that help inspire and, and keep us, yeah. you know, remind us of what the future is going to do for us. So just, you know, all of us here today, this is the worst we're ever going to be in this as long as we don't quit. Right. As long as we don't quit, we keep moving. We, we have compounding effects of activity that compound on one another. Our skill sets get better. Our business gets bigger. We help more clients. We make more money. It's just a beautiful thing. So Max, anything you want to, anything else you want to leave the team with before we end for the day? I mean, you're, we're not a silo, right? Nobody's in this alone. There's all sorts of resources and things available. There's people that are willing to talk to you and walk you through. I mean, I think I, I texted you once or twice, like, is this real? Is, is this real? Um, last week. And then, you know, texting people, you know, I, there was one day where I made five grand before 11 AM and I'm like, I could not do the rest of my appointments, but I'm going to do the rest of my appointments. Right. So it's just, um, it's one of those things. I think I had a little bit of sticker shock to start with, like, is this really real? Um, but it, again, it took action. It, it, it took getting over my own thought process, my own mindset, and just relying on those that have gone before me and trusting and, and walking through the process and, and it's working. So I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> awesome, Max. Well, you are an absolute beast. I don't expect anything less than 30, 40 K a month. Once you just get your rhythm down. I mean, there, there's zero reason. I mean, and that's probably, I, I don't even want to limit to 30, 40 K because you can do well over 30, 40 K, but I expect you to be a top producer here. Um, not only now in the future. And so i um, proud of you. Happy to be in business with you again. And uh, let's actually build <laughs> the right. empire that, that we actually intended on when we first started working together. Yes. Definitely. Let's do it. All right, you guys, it's dial day. Go out there, book your appointments. Nothing happens without appointments. Get on FFLDialTeam.com. Grady's call starts in about an hour and 15 minutes. If you guys need anything, reach out. Otherwise, let's crush the phones and see you guys in Slack. Take care. Thanks, Max. 